So to begin our corridor design, we want to make a new file. And again, it's, everything's going to be 2D. Unless you're working with survey or uh, terrain model development, typically all of your files are going to be 2D files. And so this file, I'm going to just call it uh, corridor design. Whoops, actually need to select our seed file first. So 2D and new corridor design. And we'll say save that. And so we'll switch over to that file. And now we need to set up our references again. So we're going to attach first is our terrain model. So that's our existing ground file. And we really don't need nesting on that because everything's in the default model. Um, so you can select no nesting for your existing ground because it's already 3D. And we will do a fit view for that. And again, uh, we need to make this active. And so I'll select it and set that as our active terrain model. And then after we've done that on the existing ground, turn off your snap and locate. Um, all, required, all that we are required to do is to be able to display. And so we'll turn those off for that particular attachment for the existing ground. Now the next thing that we want to do is on our, and notice how it automatically uh, made our default 3D model as soon as we made it active. Again, on that particular one, we don't really want to see our 3D model in our 2D design. And so typically on those, I'll just turn it completely off for what we're doing right now. And so if you're placing civil cells later, then you, you might need to turn uh, that back on. But in terms of doing your two-dimensional design, you need to see your active terrain, and that's it. And then on your 3D model, you're going to see that in another view, um, but you don't need to see it in your default 2D view. And so we'll turn that off. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to attach our geometry. Now, on our geometry, that is where we do need to establish a nesting depth value of 1 because it needs to also pick up the profile, uh, which is in a sub-model. And so we're going to turn on live nesting, set it to 1, and we're going to attach not the default 3D model, but the default. And by turning on nesting, it'll give us access to here, our model, which contains our profile information. And so that's why we set our nesting depth to 1 on our attachment of our geometry. And so we'll do that. And on, on the geometry file, uh, typically, again, you don't necessarily need to have your, uh, your locate on, but you are going to be selecting your geometry quite a bit for making your corridors. So I just generally use snap and locate on for geometry as, as a best practice with nesting depth set to 1 and the default model actually attached. And so this is a very common workflow of how you would set up your files. Now, of course, in the Modon environment, these file names will be you know, assigned certain specific uh, values you're supposed to use, um, but you get the gist of, of what I'm trying to present here. So we're going to be working on this main line first. And what we want to do is establish a corridor along here. And we're just going to just design this as an urban uh, two-lane road, or we could do real. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but we're basically just wanting to show you how to make a corridor and to drop in a template. And so we're going to make a corridor along this main line uh, first. And then once that corridor is done, I'm going to show you how we can then design a profile for our side road that matches up with our edges of pavement on our main line. So let's go ahead and establish this first corridor. So we're going to select our alignment. And again, pretty much all tools that you need are going to be known by the product. And you select what it is you want to work on. And then it'll give you the right tools to access based on what you've selected. So we've selected our geometry. And on our geometry, we want to select this second icon to create a corridor. And essentially, we can follow the prompts for the most part whereas it'll kind of walk us through what we need to do. And so the first thing it's asking us for is to locate the, a profile to use or hit the reset or the right mouse button uh, to select the active profile. Well, remember, when we set up our geometry file, we made that proposed profile active. And so therefore, we can just select our uh, right mouse button to select our active profile to use. Now it says to give this a corridor 
name and I'll just I'll just call this anything I want to it doesn't really matter it defaults to the name of the baseline um, but I'll just say uh, uh, we'll just do uh, MoDOT123 um, okay so that's the name of our baseline and then we'll accept that and now it's asking us to select the template that we want to run along the project and notice how it says to select alt down to browse the template library so hold down your alt key and then select the down arrow key and what that does is allows you then to access your templates right here in your template library works in your workspace you're using so I'm going to go down to rule and I'm going to select uh, two lane uh, rule and say OK to that and it asks you then to verify your selection so we'll do that by selecting our left mouse button now it asks us where we want to start this template drop well I can move my mouse and you can see that it follows the stationing I can type in a station if I want to and so let's if I did that notice how it already understood that I was on the second side of a, a first station equation I didn't even type R2 it just knew that and so if I window out here you'll kinda see uh, where this is you know taking place you know, we take a look at our stations here you can see where I typed in 400 so that's going to be quite a ways back here and if I try to find it I think I already passed it yeah you can see the blue line right here is station 400 I'm just going to start somewhere it doesn't really matter where we start and we'll, we'll accept that location now if I hit the alt key what that will do is start it at the very beginning of the baseline so just to show you that what it does in the, in the tool settings is it says lock to start and so now it just knows station 75 and when I hit my mouse button there it'll accept that but if I hit my alt key again it turns off the padlock and allows me to dynamically set a location so I'm just going to type in let's say 41500 uh, now to get my focus back to type I have to hit my tab key so 41500 enter and then I'm going to left mouse click to accept now it's asking me for the end station and so the end station let's just say we want to lock it to the end of the alignment what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to select alt key and lock it and then once it establishes that I select my left mouse button again and it takes me to my next property that I have to put in here this is the drop interval of the templates now don't let this confuse you in terms of well I'm just doing preliminary design or you know what accuracy basically consider this your final design template drop interval and let's say for example MoDOT wants it to be 10 I don't know I'm just putting a number in what that says is I'm going to drop templates every 10 feet but depending on what design stage you set that may be um, multiplied by a number let's say I pick preliminary design and the multiplier is 5 so I would only get templates every 50 feet in a preliminary design phase and the reason that we do that is to allow faster model processing and so just remember though that when you're asked for an interval consider that your final design uh, interval that you would like to see on this particular project and so we'll say okay to that every 10 feet and then we will hit accept with the left mouse button and then it asks us for a minimum transition uh, before and after and what this is for is if I'm doing different templates let's say I'm going from a divided to an undivided um, and I'm putting in these templates it'll allow you a transition distance to input uh, to transition between those two typical sections well in this case I'm running the same template along the entire range so I can just leave these transitions to be zero so we'll accept those and then this will then develop our model in that particular location now it's going to take you into setting up your next template drop or you can hit your escape or in the examples workspace F4 and it takes you out of that command now I'm going to press the F9 key here uh, just so that we can kind of watch our model at the same time and so if we window in over here in our 3D model you'll see that we have uh, the the startings of of our actual uh, model here and just to show you how to rotate your model um, first you have to make this drawing active and you can do that by clicking on the header and then in your rotation view I usually select the rotate view dynamic here and you have to actually first move your rotation point and allow it to snap 
on a location on your model because that essentially is your three-dimensional pivot point. Once you move that with your left mouse button, then click with your left mouse button in the view and then you can spin or rotate your particular model um, any way you want to. And you'll see the, the existing side road, which is following the, the terrain there, um, is actually on top of the road a little bit. And so we'll, we'll come in and, and design that profile next. Okay, so that's how you rotate. Now, to get back to your design view, you just come over here and click in view one, and you'll see at the top here in MicroStation, see how it shows you your active model, depending on which view you here you pick. Because remember, if we look at this view setup over here in view two, this is going to be set to our default 3D model. But over here in view one, we have this one set to our default model. And when I'm talking about models, basically a model is kind of like a reference file. A model is a drawing within the drawing. So we have our default drawing and we have another drawing that's actually 3D that is being managed by the actual product itself. And so you can see we haven't done anything over here other than just, you know, pan around and kind of watch the development. Now a couple of things to point out here uh, before we go design this profile. Notice that these these template drops are definitely further uh, than every 10 feet and that's because we have selected a design stage and I'm going to show you uh, where that was at when we created the corridor of preliminary or functional in this particular example. But if you select the the what we call the quick properties icon on the corridor and this this handle here represents the corridor okay and this this purple out here represents template drops and so if we select the corridor and go to our quick properties you're gonna see that we have some options here now MoDOT's are, list is gonna be a little bit different you will not have uh, the zero functional but everything else should look the same um, but for example if I go to design here what it's going to do watch what happens with your interval of your template drops See how you have a lot more template drops now? And we even have some intermediate template drops, which are based on horizontal and vertical geometry and, and cardinal points that it's picking up. And so essentially, by changing that design phase, it, it makes your template drops uh, much quicker or you know closer together. And, and you'll see here we went to a yellow. Yellow generally represents design. Uh, if I go over here to final, uh, then it's actually going to use the template drop interval that you s put in to make the corridor, uh, which in our case was 10. And so now you're going to see our template drops are every 10 feet, whereas in design they were every 20 feet. So that was using a multiplier of 2. And so you can see now our model is becoming uh, much more precise in, in the, its appearance. And so that's, you know, usually red represents a final design stage on these corridor handles. A um, couple other things to show you, we have this purple border here. And what the purple, purple border represents is the actual template drop. And so I can take this template drop and I can key in a, a new station. Let's say I want that template drop to start at 420. And as soon as I do that, that model gets reprocessed and then the first template drop would take place at that new location that I entered, for example. And so that you can see that that got moved. Um, I can also select my, my template drop and based on my context sensitive toolbar I can look at the properties here and make changes right here if I want to. I can pick a different template for example. Um, I can change the interval of that particular template drop so a lot of options there in, in the quick properties. I can even edit that template drop and so if I select edit the template drop it takes me into my template editor right to that template and I can make the appropriate changes and you can drag and drop as well um, if you want to and, there, and the undo command is also supported here as it, additionally. So that concludes the basics of actually creating a corridor and applying different design stages to that corridor where we have assigned a template and so we're going to conclude this video and in the next video we're going to actually go design that proposed profile for our side road.